Their bond quickly attaches. Attaches. What? This is really hard. Oh my god. It's a gun box. A gun box. Hey guys, it's Jay, and today I am here with a review video for the book Dark Horses by Cecily Von Zy. Gassar. I'm gonna say that wrong every single time, so you know why are we even still trying? But this is the author of Gossip Girl, and I received this book from Booktube Tours, which is run by Grace over at Loving Dem Books, and basically we get these books and we're supposed to read them and give our honest reviews and opinions on them. So without further ado, let us get started! I ended up giving this book a 3 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. Dark Horses is told from two perspectives. One of the perspectives is Merit, who is a teenage girl who is very self-destructive, and the other perspective is a ex-racehorse named Big Red. After the death of her grandmother and horse, Merritt ends up walking out of her SAT test after a night of heavy drinking. Her parents opt to send her to Good Fences, which is an equestrian-based rehab facility center, and this is where Merritt ends up meeting Red. Red is owned by Beatrice, who is the owner of Good Fences' daughter, and she also attends this rehab facility. Red hasn't been able to bond with anybody for years and he hasn't allowed anybody to ride him either and that's when he meets Merritt. In the beginning, Red and Merritt really do not like each other but as their bond grows they start sneaking off to ride after curfew. Their bond quickly catches the attention of the owner of Good Fences, Beatrice's father who is a wealthy businessman and he decides that he is going to help fund Merritt and Red in order to allow them to go off and tour in the United States and compete in horse races. Merritt ends up developing a friendship with Beatrice and she also has a possible love interest in a competitive rider named Carvin. Red really does not like Merritt's newfound friendships. Anybody who tries to come in between him and his human poses a threat and he'll stop at nothing to keep them together forever. Does that not sound super good? It sounds super good. I mean, I stumbled through it a little bit to get to the final, you know, summary, but it just sounded really good. The book was extremely easy to read. It was very fast-paced, and it was very fun to read. I really enjoyed the multiple perspectives, and I really, really loved Red's point of view the best. He was such a jerk of a horse, and the things that he would think, he was just so sassy, and I was like... If, if all horses are like this, I want to hang out with them. Like, they're funny. But, like... Sadly, horses can't talk, but in my head I would be like, I know you're thinking something funny, mister. I'm still not 100% sure how I feel about Merit. At times, I found her really boring and bland, but then other times I really liked her as a character, and as she, like, sort of developed throughout the story, she kind of, like, slipped back into the negativity, but then she would bring herself back up, so... I don't know, I'm still not 100% sure if I like her or not. I really liked Beatrice, I thought she was such a brat, and it just made me laugh. Carvin, I'm still iffy about. I didn't really like him at times because he was kind of a jerk, but then other times he would be really sweet to Merritt. And it was like really kind of confusing. If that was my boyfriend, I'd be like, bruh, can you just pick either you're a jerk or you're not a jerk? Thank you. That would be the easiest solution to this problem. I also found Merritt kind of like naive with the whole Carvin thing. Because she was like, does he like me? Does he not like me? Oh my god. And it was kind of annoying at times because he would like touch her and she'd like instantly blush and I was like, girl. You're supposed to be like 17, like you need to calm yourself, it's just a touch on the arm. You're gonna be okay, you're gonna survive this. Chill. The instant love between Carvin and Merritt was kind of a bummer to me. Although the onset of the actual relationship took a while, it really pissed me off how like they literally saw each other and then they were like, Oh my god, I love you. And it was like, girl, chill. Girl, chill out. I really liked how you could tell that the author had a vast knowledge of the horses and the equestrian lifestyle based off of the vocabulary she used and just things that she wrote about in general. It was very obvious that she knew what she was talking about. Though the writing, although it was very fast-paced, it would go off onto tangents that weren't really relevant to the plot development. So I was kind of sitting there like, okay, but like, what does this have to do with anything? Like, I don't care that she's eating breakfast. Like, okay, cool. Like, no, I don't care. I did feel that the plot was a little bit too far-fetched and everything just wrapped up way too nicely. It kind of just became way too convenient and it was obvious that these things would never really happen. So it was just kind of annoying to me because I was like, this... This is not realistic. This is... Uh, no. Just no. 
I found that the ending was kind of unresolved. I really wanted to know what happened with Merritt and what happened to Carvin. We find out what happens to Red, but every other character is just kind of like, Well, the end, bye! And I was like, okay, but like, hi, what happened though? What happened though? I want to know. Overall, I think that the story was very enjoyable. I liked the multiple point of views. I liked Red a lot. Merritt and Carvin, eh, they're okay, I guess. But I would recommend the book if you're into horses because it's <laughs> very, very horse related. It was a fun, like, thriller ish book. I thought it was cute. So I gave it three out of five stars. Alright, guys, so if you check the boxy thing down below there is a giveaway for this book so if you're interested in winning your own copy of dark horses then definitely check that out i will see you all in my next video goodbye